person in one, so the kids will be staying upstairs with us today as we continue our series, Thou Shall Have Fun. And we're going to look at something today that is certainly a cause for celebration. We're going to be considering baptism today as a cause for celebration. We're going to do things a little bit differently because this isn't the message that I had planned to preach today, but I was going over my notes earlier this week for, to prepare for today's message, and I just felt that God was leading me in a little bit of a different way. I, I was praying over the message in our baptism service for today, and I just felt that God moved my heart. And the best way I can explain it is that it was like the Holy Spirit said, look, you're, you're going about this the wrong way. It's not supposed to be a morning service with a baptism service at the end. The baptism is the main thing. And there, there's nothing wrong with the way that we've done baptisms in the past. In, in fact, pretty much every church service I've ever been to, they did baptism services pretty similarly, where there was more of a regular morning service followed by a baptism service at the end. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's not unbiblical, but I felt in, impressed by the Holy Spirit this week that the changes that God has made in people's lives when they put their trust in Him and how God has moved in their hearts and their decision to follow Him through faith and obedience to baptism, that that should be the main thing. That should be the focus. But, but, but what God has done in people's hearts in drawing them to Him and the changes that He's made in their lives is way more important than anything that I have to say. And again, I'm not saying that we've done it wrong or that other people have done it wrong. All I can say is that God has pressed on my heart for this week to put the focus on what is most important without question, that is people who have decided to align their lives with Jesus Christ. So we're going to see today that baptism is a cause for celebration. It's a cause for rejoicing. And I just felt convicted about taking something that God celebrates and to heaven rejoices in trying to make it fit in or to add it on to what we already had planned when it should be the entire focus of what we do today. Now, obviously, there's some practical reasons why we can't make the entire service totally and completely the baptism service. I would love to stand in the baptistry and, and preach, but I'd probably get electrocuted, which uh, probably would not be the greatest thing when we're streaming live. Um, but hearing people give their testimonies about how they came to faith in Jesus Christ and the change that He's made in their hearts, we do want to try to keep that front and center as much as we can today. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm praying about and trying to think through ways of, in the future how we can have baptism services and not have the baptisms feel like an extra addition to the end of the service, but have the baptism be the service. And whether that means having an outside service where we can all gather on the lake and hear their testimony and what God has done. Um, you know, I believe that most of us here today really understand that a baptism service should not be a whole hum status quo. Uh, this is what we pray for. This is what we plead God for. When we're, we meet each week on Wednesday night for our prayer meeting service, we pray that God would move in people's hearts and lives and bring them to Him. And when He does that, we shouldn't just confine it to an extra thing that we add on the end of the service. It should be what is exalted. It should be what is what is magnified. So we're going to focus today specifically on baptism. We're going to see why it's such a big deal, why we should celebrate it, and ways that we can prepare our hearts to celebrate those who will be getting baptized in just a little while. So if you'll find Matthew chapter 3 in your Bibles, this will be our opening text for today. We'll be looking at other passages as well, but we're going to begin today by reading Matthew chapter 3. So once you've found Matthew chapter 3, I'll invite you to, if you're able to, to stand with me out of the honor of the reading of God's Word. If you will follow along with me as I read verses 13 through 17 of Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3, starting verse 13, says, Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan to John, to be baptized him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized with thee, and comes out of him. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Suffer to be so now, for thus we come to fulfill all righteousness. And he suffered. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, and lighting upon him. Verse 17, And lo, a voice from heaven saying, 
this is my beloved son, and who I am well pleased. Let's go to the Lord, Lord of Prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for the opportunity to be in your house today. Father, it is always a blessing to have the physical ability to be healthy enough to come into your house. Father, it's a blessing to have the, the mental capacity to comprehend your word and to contribute and participate in your service, Father. It's always blessed to do those things. But Father, we have the unique privilege and opportunity of observing something today that is special. Father, we have people today that we have prayed for. We have people today that have made their decision to put their faith in your son, Jesus. Amen. And Father, we want to celebrate that. We want to honor that. We want to rejoice in that. Yes. I pray that while we're here today, you will help us to see from your word why we should celebrate baptism, why it's a big deal to you, and why it should be an even bigger deal to us. So, Father, I pray that as we look to your word today, as always, nobody needs to hear from me, but we all need to hear from you. So, Father, I ask you to speak to me, speak through me. As we look to your word today, I pray that you'll change all of us today to make our hearts prepared for what we're going to see in just a few moments. We pray all these things now perfect. Precious and powerful name of Jesus. Yeah. Everyone said? Amen. You might take your stand if you take your seats. Amen. If you have a bulletin you'd like to follow along, there's an outline for today's message on the back of the bulletin. And we see a few very important, some very key thoughts related to baptism in the example here of when Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. So when we ask the question, why should we celebrate baptism? Why should they be a big deal to us? Why should we pay special attention to what we're going to do today? Well, the first thing we're going to see today is that heaven's faith, heaven pays special attention to baptisms. Verse 16, it says, when Jesus was baptized, it says, when he came up out of the water, it says, lo, the heavens were open. Now, now notice this. When Jesus was baptized, heaven paid attention. And there was something else. John the Baptist had been preaching this entire chapter. If you look all the way back in verse 1, it says that John the Baptist was preaching in the wilderness of Judea. And verses 2 and 3, it shows us what his message was. His message was very simply, repent of your sins. Turn from your sins. Get your heart right with God. So John's preaching this message, and then in verses 7 through 12, he calls out the Pharisees and the Sadducees for their hypocrisy, for their pride and their pretentiousness. And all these things are biblical. All these things are good. People need to be told to turn from their sins and to turn to Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. People need to be warned that being religious isn't enough. You need a relationship with Jesus Christ. People need to know these things. But notice something. It wasn't during the preaching. It wasn't during the rebuking that heaven opened up. Heaven opened up during the baptism. And we need to understand something today. <coughs> In just a little while, we have two people that are, Lord willing, are going to be baptized. Amen. And the ceiling in this building might not move. <laughs> the roof might not be taken off this building today. But make no mistake about it, in just a few moments when Miss Linda and Maya get baptized, without question, heaven will open up. Yeah. Amen. And when you look at the end of verse 16, we see why this is such a big deal. We see why heaven opened up. We see that heaven was opened up for God to deliver a very specific message. In verse 16, we see that heaven was opened. And in verse 17, God speaks and he says, This is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. Now we know that God is speaking about Jesus here when he said, This is my beloved Son. But this is why baptism is such a big deal. Why heaven pays such special attention to baptism is because the person being baptized is identifying themselves as a child of God. Amen. So in just a little while, when Maya and Linda get baptized, we might not see anything different, but make no mistake no about it, the heavens will open. We might not hear anything different, but God will say, this is my beloved daughter. And we think about, or ask, why should baptism be such a big deal? Anything that pleases God should be a big deal. Amen. Anything that pleases God should be a big deal. Right. Anything that pleases God should be celebrated. At the end of verse 17 it says, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Make no mistake about it. What we're about to see today 
what we're about to participate in today pleases God. It pleased God when Jesus was baptized, and it pleases God when other people put their faith in Jesus Christ and get baptized as well. And listen, baptism is not what saves you. Your right. faith in Jesus right. Christ is what saves you. Amen. But we see that when people get saved and choose to publicly identify as being part of his family, the end of verse 17 says that pleases God. Back in verse 13 it says that Jesus came from Galilee to Jordan to be baptized. So one thing that's important to know is that Jesus made the decision to be baptized himself. Nobody pressured him or forced him to be baptized. Right. He made that decision right. on his own. That's why we don't pressure people here to be baptized. It's a decision that they have to make on their own. Yeah. It's a decision between them and God when they're ready to make that decision public through baptism. In fact, in our Discover Grace class, our membership class, the way we lay it out is first believe when you're in Jesus Christ, then be baptized, then be long. Get saved. Follow God through baptism, and then get plugged in be the rest of your life serving God and being busy living for Him. But we see here that when to get baptized is personal. Because if you get baptized because your mom or your dad or your grandpa or your grandma want you to get baptized, then you're doing it for the wrong reason. The reason to get baptized is because God has touched your heart and told you that it's time to take your faith public and let others know that you committed your life. Amen. So baptism is not what saves you. It's simply an outward demonstration of a decision that you've already made in your heart to follow Christ. And when that happens, we see here in verse 16, heaven paid special attention. We should give special attention to baptism because heaven gives special attention to baptism. And next we see that heaven celebrates baptism. If you'll find Luke chapter 15 in your Bible. Luke chapter 15, the beginning of verse 7 says, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repents. If you look at verse 10, Jesus says, Likewise I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repents. If, if there is joy in heaven when people turn to God, there should be joy on earth too. Let me say that again. If there is joy in heaven when people turn to God, there ought to be joy amongst God's people here on earth when people make that decision too. If they're celebrating in heaven when people turn to God, there should be celebrating too. If angels are celebrating today, there ought to be some saved people on earth celebrating. If the angels are celebrating today, we should be celebrating today. These are our friends. This is our family. So we should celebrate today in a way that gives the angels one for them. Baptism shouldn't be, oh, amen, look at the time, let's get up there real quick for lunch. That's not what it should be. If that's our response, we've missed it. If you look back at verse 4, here in Luke chapter 15, Jesus says, if any of you has a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away. Verse 5 says that when he finds that sheep, he lays it on his shoulders, and what's that next word? Rejoicing. Verse 6 says that he calls his friends and his neighbors saying, Rejoice with me. Verse 8 says that if a woman has ten silver coins and she loses one, she searches diligently until she finds it. And then verse 9 says that when she, when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors saying, Rejoice with me. Make no mistake about it, we are here to rejoice today. We are here to celebrate today. If you came to church today knowing that people are getting baptized, but you didn't come ready to celebrate and you came unprepared, if you came today, no, we're having baptisms, but you're not ready to rejoice. You're not prepared. We are here to celebrate today. This is what we're here for. Listen, what's more important, a sheep or a person's soul? What's more, what's more important, a lost coin or a person's eternal destination? You know, if, if you lose a possession and find it later on, and you rejoice more, more over that than what we're going to do in a few minutes, and there's something wrong in your heart. You know, if you lose your wallet or your phone or your keys to something else, and then you find it, you're more joyful about that than what you are about what we're about to do in a few minutes. There's something wrong. And I'm not saying that to be mean. 
But if you really understand what baptism means, then celebrating it should come naturally. Especially among saved people who know what it means to be saved in that If we understand what baptism really symbolizes, celebrating it, rejoicing it, should be natural. So before we get to baptizing today, we're going to look at a few things that baptism should remind us of that should prepare our hearts and cause us to celebrate third point we see today is that baptism reminds us of our own reasons to rejoice. If you'll turn over to Colossians chapter 2. If you look down in verse 12, what we will see is that baptism is a reminder of what Jesus Christ has done for us. In Colossians chapter 2, Verse 12 says, Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him for the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. We need to be reminded today that baptism is not just a religious ceremony. Right. It's right. not just a spiritual event. Baptism symbolizes and is a reminder of Jesus' death for our sins and his resurrection from the grave. And back in verse 12, Paul writes here and says, we should take that personally when we see other people get baptized. First of all, it says, when we see someone get baptized, it says, wherein also ye are risen. When we see Miss Linda, we see Maya get baptized in a few minutes, what that should do in our own heart, it should remind us of what God's done for us. Amen. It should be a, a reminder of what Jesus did for us when he left his home in heaven, came to a fallen and sinful world, lived a holy, perfect, sinless life to be re refused, to be persecuted, and ultimately to be put to death. Why? Because he loved us. For the great love wherewith he loved us. He did that for us. Yeah. That doesn't say, yes, we're going to celebrate Miss Linda, we're going to celebrate Maya, following the Lord we expect. Yeah. That's a great reason to rejoice. Yeah. But another great reason for us to rejoice is because it reminds us of what Jesus has done for ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. First of all, so that Jesus died for your sins. He raised for the grave. Verse 13, he goes down and says, we were dead in our sins, but he has quickened us, or he's brought us to life. As the other verse says, forgiving you of your trespasses. When we see baptism say it's a reminder of our own forgiveness we've received from Jesus Christ. It's a reminder of everything that we've obtained through our relationship with him. And then four, verse 14 says that Jesus has blotted out our sins and removed them all by nailing them to his cross. Hmm. So baptism is a reminder of what Christ has done for us. And when we observe others who put their faith in Christ and those who have chosen to follow him, it should be a visual reminder of having our own sins forgiven by Jesus. So we rejoice because of the reminder of what Christ has done for us, but we also rejoice because baptism is a celebration of their new life in Christ. Romans chapter 6 verse 4 says, Therefore we are ready to make baptism into death, because like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should also walk in newness, in newness of life. Baptism signifies a new life in Christ. And as we baptize people today, we're signifying an important transformation. When they step into the water in just a few moments, that represents their old life apart from Jesus. And when I immerse them under the water, that represents the cleansing that took place in their heart when they put their faith in when I lift them up out of the water, it's a symbol of them being raised to walk in the newness of life. A life in their, they place their faith in their resurrected Savior, Jesus Christ. Baptism should remind us to celebrate. Mark 1, 4 says that baptism symbolizes our forgiveness for sins. Acts 22, 16 symbolizes our sins being washed away. And 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21 so the baptism symbolizes not only a cleansing of our outward body, but a cleansing of our 
inward parts that takes place for our salvation by Jesus Christ. So in a few moments when Linda and Maya get baptized, they might look the same. But don't be fooled. Their lives are changed. Through salvation, they receive transformation, which is cause for salvation. Amen. Amen. So before we get to the main thing today of celebrating along with all of heaven, those who are getting baptized today, I want to look at one final thought. We see that baptism is a reason to rejoice. It is a cause for celebration. It's a reminder of what Christ has done for us and a recognition of the new life of those who place their faith in Jesus Christ. So if you'll, for our last point today, go turn back to Luke chapter 15, we'll see one more thing. Back in Luke chapter 15, we'll see that we have a responsibility to celebrate. We saw in this chapter earlier, in verse 6, when they were called to rejoice when the man found his lost sheep, and in verse 9, when the woman found her lost coin. But we see that Jesus feels so strongly about celebrating when someone puts their faith in him, that he illustrates this point a third way through the example of the prodigal son. Now Jesus really does not want us to miss this. If you'll look at verses 20 through 24, we'll see what happened when the prodigal son returned to his father. Verse 20 says that he arose and came to his father, but when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck. He kissed him. The son said unto him, Father, I sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to call thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, or wring out his hand and shoot down his feet. Bring him to the fatty calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. To this fight, my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Notice there in that text, it wasn't just the son who celebrated. It wasn't just the father who celebrated. The end of verse 24 doesn't say he or him. It says they began to to be married. Now, who is that th that they referring to? It's referring to everybody there who became aware that this son had come to his father. Yeah, right. Everybody here today, regardless of how well you know the people getting baptized or not, regardless of whether you are related to them or not, regardless of whether you even know them or not, everybody here today that is now aware that these individuals have placed their faith in Jesus Christ has the responsibility of joining in and celebrating over their decision to follow Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And look, Amen. I know that might make some people feel uncomfortable. You might think, well, I don't really want to celebrate. I don't really want to rejoice. Well, first of all, let that sink in. The fact that you can know that someone was lost and on their way to hell, but they put their faith in Jesus, and now their lives are changed and they're bound for heaven, but you don't really feel like rejoicing for them. You don't feel like celebrating. <clears throat> well, guess what Jesus says? Too bad. <laughs> Just because you have the wrong attitude doesn't mean that God makes an excuse for it. And listen, I've been in churches my entire life, so I understand there is always going to be a group of killjoys. You can say amen there. Okay. There's always going to be a group of killjoys in any church. There's always going to be people who can't or won't or choose not to celebrate what other people celebrate, even if it's what the Bible clearly tells us we should be celebrating. There's even one here in this chapter. This son, when he came home to his dad, when he got his heart right, everybody was excited. Everybody was celebrating. Everybody was rejoicing, except for one person. If you look down at verse 25, it says, now his elder son was in the field, and he came and drew nigh to the house, and he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother has come, and thy father has killed the fatted calf, because he has received him safe and sound. Look at his response. He was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgress I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid, that I might go make merry with my friends. And as soon as this thy son was come, which has devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. Verse 31, And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry, and be glad. For this thy brother was dead, and is alive again, and is lost, and is found. Amen. Amen. In a few moments when we have these people baptized, you can decide if you want to be like everybody else in the story that was celebrating the way they should when someone came aboard. Or if you want to be the brother in verse 25, 
who says he was out in the field, separating himself, either physically or emotionally, from celebrating that everybody else was partaking. You have to decide if you're going to celebrate today or not. You can have the right response, or you can have the wrong response. That's up to you. But notice, biblically speaking, the only right response to baptism is celebration. Rejoicing. That is the only appropriate biblical response to what we're going to see today. So we see here, even though this brother had turned back to his father, even though his brother's heart was changed, even though his brother's life was changed, even though he had reconciled his relationship with his father, we see here that this brother didn't feel like celebrating. And go down to verse 32. The father didn't say, well, we're going to celebrate, and you can just stay out here and if you don't want to be part of the celebration. He didn't say, well, it's up to you. You can rejoice if you want to, but if not, that's okay. No, he said there in the beginning of verse 32, it is meet mm-hmm. that we should make merry and be glad. Mm-hmm. That word meet means fitting or proper. So if it is fitting or proper to celebrate when people come to Christ, it is improper to not celebrate. If it is appropriate to rejoice when people get saved, it is inappropriate to withhold our rejoicing when people get saved. The word meet, the root word of it, actually comes from the word which means we have to. It was a requirement. It's not only right to celebrate when people come to Christ. It's not only fitting or proper to celebrate when people come to Christ. It is the only option. It is the only right response. When someone comes to Christ, we have to be merry and glad. Why? Because this thy brother, our sisters, were lost. But now they're found. Amen. Amen. It is incumbent upon each of us today when we see people who have passed from death to life, who've gone from being lost to being found. It is incumbent upon us to celebrate. So I'm going to invite those that are getting baptized today to go ahead and get dressed and come forward. They can join me up right here by the stage on the baptistry. And while they are, if there's anybody here today that has never accepted Jesus Christ as their really what we're going to see today that our steps said Maya and Miss Linda from. And what's so perfect about the gospel is it's not bound by age. Right. It's not dependent on any external fact. We're going to see today a young child can understand that Jesus died on the cross for her sins. She can put her faith in Jesus Christ. We're going to see that an adult can come to those same conclusions. To know that she was helpless to save herself. But she had a God that loved her and out and said, yes, I'm sorry. If you're here today and you've never made that decision, maybe you've heard about Jesus, maybe you've heard about God, but maybe you've never made that personal decision. Today's the day. Yeah. Today's the day. Amen. If you understand, you know what? The Bible says we've all sinned. We all, we all, all sort of glory to God. You know, if you say, you know what? I, I've done some things in my past. Guess what? We all have. Yeah. Say, well, I'm still struggling with some things right now. Well, guess what? We all are. That's why Jesus came to die. Right. If you're here today and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, I would invite you today. Do not leave here today without getting that saved. Amen. You, you can put your faith in Jesus Christ today. You can, you, can, um, you can get that nailed down today. Okay, for those of us that have done that, who put our faith in Jesus Christ, I want to be reminded of the significance about, of what we're about to do today. We're going to observe and witness people who have given their lives to Jesus. In, in just a few minutes, we have the privilege of observing them when they make that decision public by being baptized. So we are here to celebrate their decisions. We saw today that heaven opens up when people are baptized. We saw that God is pleased when people are baptized. So as we prepare to go forward with the main the main thing today, I want to close with a word of prayer and just have a time for us to all prepare our own hearts. To remember what God has done for us. How He washed away our sins. How He's forgiven us. And as we celebrate them today, let's do it the way the Bible commands us to. Wholeheartedly. 
cheer for them because we recognize that they are now about to witness and experience what those who are saved have, have already received. Yeah. And that should that should make us excited. We should that should motivate us to, to praise God today with all our hearts. Let's have a word prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for your word. We thank you so much that you loved us so much that you sent your son to die for our sins. We, we, we love you that Father, you tell us in your word that we love you because you first loved us. Mm-hmm. Father, we, we meet here today just so thankful for what we have the privilege of seeing today. Father, as we see Maya, as we see Miss Linda get baptized yes. today, Father, it's a reminder of what you've done for us. Yes. Father, those of us who are saved, Father, we can remember that time we put our faith in you. We can remember that time we felt changed from the inside out. And Father, I pray that you'll help us to celebrate that day and remember as we remember we're reminded of what baptism really signifies and what it means. Father, I pray for anybody here today that's not with the faith in you, but today will be the day of their salvation. That they can know, they can be saved, they can know that no matter what they've done in their past, they can be forgiven. They can have a relationship with a God that loves them. Father, we just praise and thank you for what we're about to do. Praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Maya, most of 
here no no Michael. Blessing on Mike got saved after their new church out in Colorado. So praise God for that. Amen. And we are honored today to have a part of her baptism today here. So if I have a great Jesus Christ to yes, be in this place. By your profession of faith, baptize you. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Buried in life and death. Amen. Amen. <laughs> if there's anybody that's been saved but is not yet for the faith of Jesus Christ, please see me. Do you have any questions about that? Is there anything else we can help you out with? Do you have any questions? Anything we can help you out with? Do you have anything? Please see us before we leave today. I ask Brother Bud to kind of close us out with a word of prayer if you want to bless the food. Anybody's able to stick around and join us for a cookout, s'mores, the games up in the pavilion. We'll be up right there at the service. Good Lord bless you this afternoon. Good job, Linda. So, Father, we thank you for this baptism today, Lord, for all of these people who are just ready to do the last them. Lord, we pray that they would draw close to you, that they would live for you now, and the Father. We just thank you for the message this morning. Heavenly the Father, we certainly pray. Uh, if there's anybody here this morning that does not know Christ as their own personal Savior, if they would take this step before they leave here today, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to be able to have a time of fellowship now. We pray that you bless the food. We thank you for those that have brought. We pray that you bless them for that too. We pray for all of us, Lord, that we travel home in a while, Lord, for safety. And we just thank you.